we're finally starting to see more of a normal day in the market where if the market is actually going up most stocks should be going up but this is not what we had for the past pretty much week or two we had only google microsoft you know nvidia amazon and meta going up while the entire market was pretty much you know uh, struggling in the red so we did make a big you know improvement on that and it's starting maybe to just get back to normal how it used to be and there's something pretty you know interesting that i noticed on friday and this is the first time we actually have this in a while and this is the nasdaq pretty much underperforming the dow and the s p 500 nasdaq has been the outperformer in 2023 after it's been the underperformer in 2022 which actually makes perfect sense but i believe the nasdaq rally got way overstretched and maybe it's pretty soon to coming you know to an end as it's starting to underperform the dow and the s p 500 this is something i noticed a lot in 2022 every time the nasdaq starts underperforming this has been an indicator that maybe a reversal is very very you know soon coming to the you know a market and this is something very important to watch but if you want to see a chart that's pretty interesting and pretty ridiculous in my opinion this is the s p 500 if you take out the magnificent seven which is jim kramer i believe gave them this name the magnificent seven stocks are microsoft google apple netflix amazon meta and nvidia if you take those out of the s p 500 the s p 500 is falling like a rock and we're sitting pretty close to pre-covid levels it looks nothing like what we have right now this is how the s p looks right now it looks at a massive breakout way above where we were pre-covid but this is not how the smp really looks like if you take out all these other stocks and this is why i've been finding a lot of good opportunities in this market outside the magnificent you know seven stocks a lot of good opportunities and i'm grateful i've been getting these opportunities but i'm not sure how this is going to play out where you know these kind of stocks maybe they topped out already maybe they're close to topping out and once we have the reversal from microsoft google apple netflix and these stocks is the rotation going to come back to safety or are these safety stocks that have been falling down are just gonna fall down even more while all the mega caps you know go down it will be a very interesting you know scenario to see but in my opinion this is a pretty crazy chart of where the s p 500 and where most stocks really are if you take out you know nvidia and the other you know pretty much the magnificent you know uh, seven stocks but many of you have actually been confused and even myself although i talked about it a little bit in 2022 they were having qt while the fed pretty much is taking liquidity out of the market yes the balance sheet did you know go up in uh, march whenever we had the whole svb but it's been coming down yet the s p 500 has been going up and many of you are confused on why this is actually happening well one of the reasons it's happening and this is something most of us missed is if you actually zoom out on the balance sheet i mean it's still very very high from 3.8 trillion it topped out at pretty close to 9 trillion and now we're still at 8.3 trillion so this is a massive expansion from 2019 no matter how much you know uh, qt the fed actually does it's not going to put much of a dent in the market because there's so much money out there which is why this market crash that we talked about many times could potentially take longer to play out because there's so much money out there still from what they did pretty much in march 2020 when we had covid but the second reason why the market hasn't felt you know much of an effect in terms of what's been happening with you know the fed balance sheet is because of the tga the treasury general account because we did reach the debt ceiling in the united states the treasury has been emptying you know the treasury to satisfy the obligations of the united states so this is extra liquidity that came in the market from over 800 pretty much 789 billion dollars to now only 48 billion dollars and the entire treasury account pretty much got drained and i believe yesterday president biden you know signed on the debt ceiling bill and now they're going to increase the debt ceiling but now as we had this liquidity coming in the market offsetting what the fed has been actually doing we're gonna have the opposite because the treasury is gonna have to fill up the account again which means now the treasury has to do the opposite it has to take liquidity out of the market after it injected 
liquidity. So we're going to have more of a something like a double, you know, QT, where the Treasury is withdrawing liquidity and the Fed is withdrawing liquidity at the same time. And I'm not an expert on this subject. I'm not a macro expert, but I did read about it a lot. And it says the Treasury will replenish the TGA immediately after the increase in the debt ceiling, which means as soon as Monday. It is widely expected that the target will be close to $600 billion, which will have the effect of draining this amount from the financial system. The Fed's monthly QT is around $95 billion a month. This is how much they take out of the market. So a rapid $600 billion dollar replenishment of the TGA is likely to be felt quickly in the capital market. So this is serious stuff that we have to pay attention to. And you combine that with what we've seen in terms of the Nasdaq starting to underperform on a relative basis, you know, combining it with other things we looked at in this video, there's a very decent, you know, chance that maybe the S&P's rally is pretty close to an end, or maybe somewhere we could, you know, reverse on all those things that are actually, you know, uh, happening. But again, I'm not an expert on this i don't know how they could do it maybe if they do it slower not 600 billion in a few weeks maybe it doesn't make this effect but i know now the fed is gonna be you know doing the qt stuff and the market has been just rallying into it and if you look at the history of the market in the red whenever we had quantitative tightening like we have right now the market has always struggled to pretty much make a new high and now we're sitting pretty close to 4,300 on the S&P. So what I believe could potentially happen, and again, I'm not going all in SQQQ, but I believe we will most likely go down somewhere this week, next week, I mean, make a reversal where things cool off a little bit, where we have some fear in the market. The VIX is like 13 or 14, which is absolutely insane. And maybe we go back down and we hit this chart around 3,900, and maybe we bounce from there. But this is what I believe, you know, will happen. I think we have to have a reversal, maybe starting next week, maybe the week after but all the stuff in terms of the tga now actually withdrawing liquidity and the fed now withdrawing liquidity without anything pretty much offsetting it this is gonna be you know some real strains on stocks and on financial markets especially after the huge and massive rally that we've been having in the smp so i would be very very cautious here i am cautious in my portfolio but i'm adding stocks that i believe are undervalued just like what i showed you in this chart of the relative performance how these stocks you know are pretty much at pre-covid levels so i'm seeing a lot of good opportunities and i don't know why anyone would be mad from missing the bottom you literally have stocks making 52 week lows every single day and i just can't imagine a scenario where this continues and all the nasdaq and pretty much the s p just goes and makes a new high while all these other stocks are making 52 week lows normally they ended up catching to the S&P and maybe potentially outperforming a lot of these stocks. So I don't know why anyone would be, you know, mad of missing the bottom. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.